Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this section. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to describe viral replication. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, it's very straightforward. You basically have to be able to describe how viruses reproduce. Viruses carry out replication, but they cannot replicate or reproduce by themselves. They need the energy and they need the structures of a living host cell. They are totally dependent on the host cell for reproduction. Reproduction can only take place within another living cell. Therefore, viruses are obliged to be parasites. They are obligate parasites. Now, this is an extremely important point and they love this in exams. Why are viruses obligate parasites? They're obligate parasites because they are totally dependent on a host cell and reproduction can only take place within living cells. There are a number of steps or stages involved in the process of viral replication. These are 1. Attachment 2. Entry 3. Replication 4. Assembly and 5. Release We will now look at each step in the sequence of events. Step 1. Attachment In this stage, the virus attaches to the host cell. The virus proteins match up with specific receptor sites seen here on the host cell. The virus attaches or binds to complementary proteins on the surface of the host. Viruses can't attach to any cell they like. The cell has to have the correct proteins on its surface. This is why viruses are specific to one particular host. Even within your body, a virus might only be able to attach to certain types of cells. For example, the flu virus is only able to infect or attach to your nose cells and your throat cells. Step 2. Entry In this stage, the virus forms a hole in the host cell. The whole virus could enter the cell or perhaps just the DNA or RNA is injected into the cell. So as we can see here, the viral nucleic acid has been injected into the cell. Stage 3 involves replication or it is sometimes known as synthesis. This stage involves making new viral proteins and DNA or RNA. To carry out this process, the host DNA is made inactive. The viral nucleic acid is replicated or copied. It is replicated using the nucleotides from the host cell. Protein coats are also made. The protein coats are made using the ribosomes and the amino acids of the host. So you can see clearly that the virus is a parasite. It is using the resources, the nucleotides and the amino acids belonging to the host. Step 4 involves assembly. I often think of an assembly line producing or making a car from piecing all the parts together. So in other words, assembly means to piece together. So new viruses are made inside the whole cell 
when the viral nucleic acids, when the DNA and RNA are surrounded by the protein coats. So the new viruses are made by piecing together the parts made within the host. The final step involves release. During this step, the host cell might burst open, called lysis, and the new viruses are released from the host cell to go on and infect other cells. The viruses are also able to diffuse out through the cell membrane. Don't forget the viral replication stages. I would suggest drawing out the diagrams for each stage and learning the relevant points to accompany each diagram. Practice in your jotter. The stages were 1. Attachment 2. Entry 3. Synthesis or replication 4. Assembly and finally release. As an added extra, we must mention that viral infections are controlled by 1. The body's general defence system. You might recollect that in the body's general defence system, it basically involved a barrier system which kept the microbes out or dealt with them once they were inside. Examples of our general defence system were our skin, which acts as a physical barrier, keeping viruses out. Mucous membranes in our nose, trapping the viruses. Stomach acid, killing them. And if they do succeed in entering our body system and entering our blood, the phagocytes or white blood cells would literally gobble them up. So virus infections are generally controlled by the body's defence system. They might also be controlled by our specific defence system, which involves the production of antibodies. Viral infections are also controlled by injection, by giving immunity artificially, by vaccinating us using a treated form of the disease or its toxins to stimulate the production of antibodies in our own body or by injecting antibodies to fight against the virus. And thirdly, that should be three, virus infections can be controlled by antiviral agents, for example, interferon. So even though we're using medication and artily, artificially developed chemicals to control the infection, antibodies must be still produced by your own body. The most important thing of all is that antibiotics do not affect viruses. Now this is vitally important and they just love it in exams. Now before you say that the doctor prescribed you antibiotics for when you had a bad flu which is caused by a virus. Yes, the doctor might have prescribed antibiotics when you had the flu, but the function of the antibiotics was to clear up the secondary infections that accompanied the flu infection. These would be bacterial infections that accompanied the infection caused by the virus. As we've said, antibiotics do not affect viruses. And there you have it, practice in a jotter. And here's hoping this video replicates and turns viral. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you describe viral replication.